Scott Cook, billionaire, co-founder of Intuit and director of both eBay and of Procter & Gamble. He once said, we're still in the first minutes of the first day of the internet revolution. But what if I told you we're nearing the end of the internet as we know it? Hey, I'm Joel with JT Films, and thank you so much for watching this mini documentary. The internet. For most of my generation, it's pretty much always existed. For those watching before it existed, remember how big of a deal it was and obviously still is. What if I told you that the internet 2.0 is coming? In fact, it's already here. Before we get to that, let's define what the internet even is. What is the internet? The internet is like a popular thing. Some satellites up there. I picture in my head with like waves of internet going to the phone. Somebody told me a cloud once. The internet is a lot like plumbing. It's always moving. Most people don't have any idea where the internet came from, and it is, doesn't matter. They don't need to. It's sort of like asking who invented the ballpoint pen or the flush toilet or, you know, the zipper. These are all things we just use every day, and we don't even think about the fact that one day somebody invented them. So the internet is just like that. Many, many years ago, in the early 1970s, my partner Bob Kahn and I began working on the design of what we now call the internet. As you can see, there are many different ideas and thoughts on what the internet is. And for a deep, in-depth history and great insight, you can follow the link to that video down below. But I'll give, I think, the best summary possible in the most simplistic way. The internet is a bunch of computers tied together. How, you may ask? Well, my computer wants to access something, let's say google.com. I'll type in google.com and it'll contact my service provider and tell it, hey, he wants to visit google.com, is that okay? And then it will usually say yes, unless obviously there's some privacy restrictions put in place by you. But google.com is not very scandalous, so I'm sure that's okay to go to. So it'll send me that specific IP address to access google.com. There are many good videos on how the internet works in more detail than I could give. But the main point is that you are connecting to the internet through an internet service provider like Turner Warner, Comcast, whatever it may be. The downside to that being pretty obvious. The fact that it's not decentralized means that the government could just go to your ISP and be like, hey Verizon, we want to see everything that JT Films is looking at right now or has looked at, or any data they have on them. It essentially is taking the power out of the hands of the people and putting it into the hands of the government. While I'm careless on the fact that our government completely spies on us, as, well, Edward Snowden made that very clear and that it was a real thing going on, not even a debate anymore. I'm more of a libertarian probably, where I support the idea of small government not be able to control your entire life 1984 style. That brings us to blockchain technology and crypto. Blockchain technology is when you request something to go to a website, to buy Bitcoin, or transfer funds from Venmo, anything you normally are requesting every time you use online devices, and you send this request to a network of computers known as nodes. These nodes verify this ledger, let's call it, that verifies you have that money in your account, that, that the website exists, Whatever it is, it verifies any requests that can be filled. Once that is verified, that transaction of verification adds another block to the chain of verificated blocks, aka that's where the blockchain name comes from. Then your request is complete, and these blocks are impossible to alter or permanent because each one verifies with the last one using proof of work to verify, does this exist? Is this real? Is this ledger accurate? The term you hear along with blockchain all the time is cryptocurrency. Essentially, this type of digital currency is made using cryptographic methods, which makes it by all means nearly impossible to counterfeit. Well, not impossible, nothing's impossible, but by all means is likely never happen compared to anything else being faked over the internet or lied about. As it would immediately be noticed by the blocks past a verification saying, oh, that's not what ours says, I must not be right. 
not only you have to change one block, you'd have to change all the blocks. That's why we say it's nearly impossible. If any of that's confusing, that's okay. I've been saying this for a long time and I mean, it's just a new way of doing everything over the internet. This could be the basis of the internet 2.0. This tech would fix four of the main problems plaguing modern internet use nowadays. One, instead of having a login to remember for each and every website, you'd have one uncrackable identity that is safe and secure to use across all platforms. You'd not only be able to streamline many things like background checks, healthcare records, travel records, you'd also be in charge of sharing these with whomever you want, and they will be yours and yours alone to share. Two, things will be more transparent and clear. As a ledger that the blockchains consist of cannot be wrong or outdated, if your money, for instance, was cryptocurrency and stolen, you'd have the address given to that money so you could track it, keeping your money even safer than before. 3. The entire technology is decentralized. No one controls it. There cannot be any governmental or personal agendas affecting you. And also, this means that nothing can upset the servers it's hosted on because it's hosted on all our computers. 4. Kind of mentioned in my second point, but it will make all your transactions secure. As a ledger cannot be changed like we mentioned several times, there is no way to fake money or to have fraudulent transactions occur because it will always check the ledger to make sure the numbers will all add up before it becomes a thing. While this architecture is impressive in theory, and I've named a lot of good things about it, why hasn't it been fully onboarded? Because I mean, that all sounds awesome, right? Well, first off, for cryptocurrencies, there is proof of work and 51% attack. Proof of work is when miners show that they mined the block by using like a proof in math, you could think. They prove that this block is real because it belongs in here because they can verify its placement and the placement of the other ones before it are accurate. This is arduous and not very efficient. But Bitcoin and Ether, the two current biggest cryptocurrencies, are actually based off this model. The 51% attack, it's very complicated, but essentially, if 51% of the miners control the mining power, they can monopolize the blocks, meaning they get all the rewards that come with making blocks. Bitcoin, Ether, all those based off proof of work. But the amount of mining power this would take is incomprehensible. And if this ever happened, that currency would be knowingly compromised and suffer. So there's no reason to do such for a group of miners. And the third issue is that and for blockchain in general, you need an insane amount of storage to store these ledgers that verify everything. And so in general, with blockchain, there's feedback against inefficiency, you know, storage issues, and they need to know your private key on hand to access your data. These are clear issues, but not unsolvable issues. So in summary, or to the point, I should say, is that I've laid out the reasons why the common internet and structure of it is lacking, and some things blockchain could come in to help those things. I'm proposing a marriage of the two, an internet 2.0 as the title of the video recommends. Combining blockchain technology and the protocols we use daily for the internet to make an internet number two, a safer place to do business on, a more capable place to store data on, to have security in, a place where you're worried of the government, influencing your decisions, or the threat of a communistic or authoritarian party overruling all the internet service providers and stealing our internet in you know, 1984 coming about. A monopoly of your data and information. A cheaper and better way to live our lives would be through this internet 2.0.